we're going to do is go over the basic operation and start up of the Finn BB-5 bark blower. Uh, start off with just the controls and where they're located. The control panel here has got the, the shutoff switch, which is a button that pushes in. You have your ignition switch. You have your material start and stop um, control, which is magnetic. You move it wherever. Um, this is just your hour meter. It tells you the operations of speeds and, and things. The material start stop switch uh, is removable and uh, is stored inside of this box when it's not in use. And when it's not in use, you put this plug in to prevent moisture and corrosion uh, happening inside that plug. This is a, a diffuser cone for putting the material down, which you would hook this onto the end of your uh, material hose. This hose here is the first segment of hose that we connect up to the bark blower. It's a more rigid hose and it's uh, um, more uh, durable as far as flexing when you're pulling the hose around it doesn't kink right close to the machine and break your, your main hose. This area here is where you connect up your hoses to the machine to uh, start applying your material. It has releases here that you can take this off and clean it out in case it gets plugged with a bigger piece of material inside that uh, will not pass through the hose. Inside the back here, which we'll get to in a little bit, is uh, where the actual airlock is, where the material feed goes into the, the hose area and discharges it out through that uh, area down below. There's a knife inside here that we have to maintain to keep it sharp and uh, it will shear the material as um, product gets in there so it does not wear the airlock too prematurely. The very start of this machine, when you get ready to get going from the very start, you will, uh, you will get over to this side. You will take all this out of the box, You'll remove the plug, connect up your uh, material start stop button, uh, mount it wherever you feel is adequate out of the way. Next step to starting the machine is you must turn this button to make it pop out. Turn the key to the on position. Once it's in the on position, the lights will flash through here until this one turns on for the engine start button. It will light up around the outside perimeter. You push it once, it'll turn green. You push it a second time to start. Once started, you'll see all the display starts to show your RPMs and such up here. Prior to doing all of this, you will already have your hose and your connectors and everything all laid out to be doing your material uh, install. Once that's all set up, then you would hit this material start button, which is the green button. That will activate the airlock, which you'll see is turning now. Uh, hit the material stop button, you'll see it'll stop. Once you start again, there's a slight delay. And then it'll start up again and also a delay in the front before it starts feeding the material to the airlock so it will clear and clean the airlock prior to dumping more material into it. This button here is a, a floor speed and uh, increase and decrease button. As you're applying your material, you'll, you'll speed this up to whatever desired flow is that you would, would require for your install. You may want to have a lot of material fast such as putting underneath the playground set or something in that order. Or you may want to have it cut way back because you're in a delicate area near uh, plantings and everything where you don't want to really flood it with a lot of material all the time. Depending on how far you're going with the material, uh, you have your engine RPM increase and decrease here. You would generally have it at a higher speed because you're usually pushing a long distance. But let's say that you're going in a short distance, distance and you're in a delicate area, you'll probably decrease the engine speed and your floor speed so you aren't uh, actually blowing the mulch down and blowing it all over as you're applying. So you, you'll find those two desirable speeds that work right for your application. Once you go from one landscape bed to a next, you will stop your material flow and move to your next uh, area and then hit your material start again and it will resume back at the same speed as what you shut it off at. 
if you were to shut the whole machine off by this red button, the key, or with your remote, you'll have to start the whole process over again and get it all set back up to the existing states that you had prior. To load this PV5, you'd be either loading it with a, a skid loader or a, a small wheel loader that could reach over the top of the hopper to uh, dump it in. This item here is the remote control that uh, either the installer himself is carrying with him or possibly the, the second person that is pulling the hose and arranging the hose for the installer. He may be wearing it doing the starting and stopping. There's a green button on the bottom side. The green button you have to push in order to make this thing active. Once it's active, uh, you will turn the red button also to activate it. And it should have this TX mark on here flashing when it's in the correct mode. This also has a material start and stop switch. That means you can do all that uh, by the hose out at the end of the remote. You'd be running the material start and stop. It's really, really ideally you want to be doing it at because you're probably going to be out 150, 200 feet away from the machine. You're not going to have somebody standing by the machine uh, starting and stopping it when you're so far away from the machine. It also has the increase and decrease of floor speed. It has the engine increase and decrease of RPM and the ability to shut the machine down with the button. Once you shut the machine down, to restart again, once again you have to turn the button to activate it, turn the key back on, and go through the whole same process. Inside here is where you can look at see the material feed. Now, the airlock also has auto reverse. Let's say that if in your mulch you ended up with a, a 2x4 or 4x4 or somehow got in there, and it's too big for the, the knife in here to shear off, or material is too hard, maybe a piece of steel or something got in there, that it cannot let the, the airlock turn. It goes in auto reverse and tries to shear off that piece so it can continue to operate. Uh, if it can't shear it off, you have to get inside here to remove whatever it is that's obstructing the airlock. These are the veins of the airlock, and in between each vein, that's where the material drops into from the feed chain here. The bed knife that we're talking about is this blade right here. That's where the material gets sheared off so that it, uh, it will flow out through the airlock assembly here as the compressed air blows it through the set of hose. If the material uh, is too hard, a piece of metal or something gets here and takes a piece out of this blade, that is something you probably have to address. Either replace that blade or get it sharpened so that it will work properly without prematurely wearing out the airlock. If that blade ends up with a big notch broken out of it and it keeps dragging material around through that groove where it's not shearing it out, shearing it off, eventually it'll put a groove all the way around the airlock and with that happening you'll lose air pressure which is, is crucial to keep this thing working properly is to maintain air pressure. This is a, the drum that breaks down the material that keeps it uh, at a certain uh, size to drop in here so it isn't a big flood of material dropping in. There's also a push plate up in the top that will also help hold the material back at the higher uh, heights of the, of the bed to keep pushing it down so it all feeds in a uniform amount. On the side here are two safety switches. Those are there so that you cannot operate this machine with the back door open it's for safety so that nobody can get injured. Um, and that would also be a problem if you're wondering why it doesn't uh, blow material. It could have a, a switch that isn't fully depressed. Maybe one of these latches isn't full, fully latched down. So you have to double check to make sure those are fully latched. This drum is just to uh, help break the material up before it falls into the, the airlock.